Hello again and welcome to another tutorial using the meme parameter calibration tool. This time we're going to combine what we've learned in the first few tutorials and go through the steps in a logical order to try and fit our full potential to the data we have. You can see here I've already imported a couple of energy versus volume curves for the aluminum system that I'm going to fit. These dots for each of these systems here. One note I wanted to make that wasn't necessarily clear last time, the format for these energy volume curves or similar curves that you're going to import in is going to be one moment, something like this. And just this tab separated values formula where you have format where you have the um, lattice constant here and the output energy here and just like that all the way down and it should be able to read that correctly as it's done here you can see. Now I'm going to use a combination of the um, calibration that we looked at last time as well as the parametric uh, plots in order to give you a good sense of the different capabilities you should probably find your own best method. Um, I do recommend often using these parametric studies as it gives you better intuition about what changing a given parameter will do to your potential. So the first thing we want to do in fitting virtually any potential is we want to get the energy versus volume curve for our reference structure correct. For the aluminum that we're looking at, the FCC is the reference structure. So this green curve is the one we want to get right first. Um, we're going to do that in two steps. First, making sure that the minimum is correct and the curvature around the minimum is correct. And two, by making sure that the whole curve is fit properly. The three parameters, there are three parameters that are going to affect what the minimum for this curve is. Sorry about that. That is going to be this a lat, the lattice constant, which should have the effect of shifting this curve to the left and right. E sub, which should have the effect of shifting this curve up and down. It's going to be the, ener the cohesive energy of the element. And alpha, which should be proportional to your modulus, which will affect the curvature of this curve around the minimum. What I'm going to do to just be a little quicker about this is we're going to do a um, automatic calibration. So I'm going to enter each of those things as calibration parameters. They can start around their initial value and I'll give them a fairly large range to make sure that we get the, the correct value in there. Um, this might affect the performance a little bit and the time it takes to run but it shouldn't be too significant for something this quick. Again I'm just letting it start at the initial value that it's at giving it a fairly broad range around those values. And seeing what comes out. Selecting this E1 versus A1 as my calibration target. Again, since we're only concerned with the, really, the values around the minimum here, I don't need to fit the whole curve. So I'll just go from say 15 to 30. It's points 15 to 30 on this curve, so around here to around here. So that should give us what the minimum point is and what the curvature around that point is. We can check over here at our calibration tab. Parameters, we have A lat over a nice range, alpha and E sub. And we're going to try and match the E1, A1 curve. So we'll go ahead and run that. It goes nice and fast for us. It's only got the one curve to fit. And what we should see as it finishes up here is we get very good agreement here around the minimum. Our minimum point is correct. The curvature is correct. Next thing we typically want to do, as we see here out, at the, out here at the ends, we don't necessarily still match the curve that well. The parameters that are going to affect this are a track and repulse. One for the inside of the curve, one for the outside of the curve. A track will affect this region of the curve. Repulse will affect this region. So we'll do each of those separately real quick. They are found in the parameter section. For the current file I'm using, aluminum is my second element, so it's going to be a track 2, 2. That's the attraction between element 2 and element 2, so aluminum in itself, and likewise with repulse. And we'll just do a parametric study this time to sort of show you how it looks. These are typically very small values. We'll go from say 0 to 0.2 or so. And look at three different values. 
and you can see very clearly here out okay we have the the e1 curves this is our fcc curve everything on the inside of the curve through the minimum is very much the same and as we get out to the edge here we get this deviation that for of a track value of zero our curve goes up too sharply for point two it turns over too much point one seems to be right around right in the middle right now i will just set it as point one to be more rigorous we could go through and do a calibration routine on this but again you can use the parametric to get a good sense of what it's doing and around where you want it before you start to optimize we change the device we need to run it again and we see it looks very nice out here now we can do the same thing with repulse Oops, sorry parametric study we'll go say from minus 0.1 now point uh, 0.2 four values to play with and we should see the exact same thing on the other side and you can see that is indeed the case um, from minus point one we get way too much curvature away for point two it curves up too much point one was about right we probably wanted a little bit smaller than that I'll try 0.75 for right now again if you want to be rigorous with this or sorry 0 0.075 to be rigorous with this you would then go and do a, a calibration routine to get it exactly right. We can see we're pretty close at this point, and our whole FCC energy versus volume curve is fit correctly. What you'll typically do next is go on to a different um, reference structure. So instead of our primary structure, which is FCC, we'll look at the BCC curve. That's the one here in blue. And um, I know ahead of time that B0 is going to affect the position of that minimum correctly. Again, there's usually only a few things we can do to change that minimum position. We don't have as much freedom since we've already fixed alpha um, and our attract and repulse, which will affect those as well. What's important is getting those right for the FCC curve and then trying to tune the other curves correctly. So I'll go ahead and play with B0 here. See, so our initial value is around 2, so let's go from, say, 1.5 to 3. Do four values in there just to give us a good sense of how it's going to change. You can see our E1 curve is not effective. That's why we that's why we did it first because changing other things is not going to affect it too much. So once it's fixed, we know we we're not going to do too much damage to it when we start changing other things. We go here to E2. We can see things starting to shift here. Um, it looks like by the time we get to three, we're getting a little bit closer to our target line here. So I'll go ahead and make it three. We'll run that again. And we see we are indeed a little bit closer with our BCC curve here. In fact, I'll go ahead and um, take out my calibration data from before. Again, it was E sub alpha and A lap that I did. Get rid of my calibration target. And now I'm going to calibrate to E2. Um, and we'll again just do around, say, points 15 through 30. Right now. We'll do most of the curve again. We don't care what else is going out here these last 15 points or so, so let's just do 1 to 30. And try and do a more exact fit there. You can start around 3, say, between 2 and 4. And we'll let that run and see how close we can get to get a more exact value. Again, we use the parametric study to get a sense of what it's doing, get an idea of where we want to be. And you can see it converts here to 2.9. And we're pretty close to what we want. Next thing we want to do, and you might see this occasionally, we have this little glitch here where the, the HPC curve has moved off what it's uh, where it's supposed to be. Usually just some minor tweaking to the parameters will get this back where it's supposed to be. But we're going to try and fit this curve um, around the points. And I know ahead of time T3 is going to be the big thing influencing our um, HCP curve. These T values can go negative. That's a good thing to know. Um, I'll go ahead and put it around negative 2. I think that should get us get rid of that little glitch there. Yeah. And we can go into a parametric study around that point. 
And again, I'm going through this very quickly because I have some idea what it's supposed to do. Um, this will obviously take longer as you sort of gain intuition. But here's a, I'm giving you a good sense of which values to play with for which things. For the FCC curve originally that you're trying to fit, alpha, A lat, E sub will get the minimum and the curvature correct. A track and repulse will get the edges correct. And then you can go on to the other curves. BCC will be heavily influenced by B0, HCP by T3. And so, again, changing T3, looking what it does to the HCP curve. Not a whole lot, actually. So it looks like where we are is pretty good. Um, we can try and do some more fine-tuning around those points and do a more um, exact calibration. You know how to do that. I'll save you the, the trouble of watching me go through it again. Um, next thing, and the last thing I'm going to fit real quick, again, there's still parameters we haven't played with yet. This will cover a couple of them. We can look and see how T2 affects our elastic constants. Again, I've already put in some values to the elastic constants, C11, C12, and C44. But we can look at parametric study of T2. So say we'll go from minus 5 to 5 for right now. Get four different values. Look at our elastic constants. Again, we have our solid lines here, the calibration targets, the dots are the ones in parametric study. We can see C11 and C12 are not particularly affected, but C44 is very strongly affected. And we get right in the sweet spot here around a value of T2 equals, we'll say, again, about 0.75 or so. Again, I'm just doing these really roughly. And we see now our C44 is 32.7. It's off by about 0.18 or so, or 1.8 or so. Again, we could do optimization with the calibration routine and get it even a little closer than that. So I'm going to stop there um, for this. We've seen how to fit our three EV curves, sort of the general order to do it in, and then gone through some of the steps to fit the elastic constants. Again, you have a couple other parameters to play with. The best thing to do is go through, use parametric studies, and see what's changing what. And always remember, once you change something, don't assume it's not going to change again. So we might see that after we've done some changes to, say, our elastic constants, our BCC curve, our HCP curve, might have changed slightly again. And so we might need to go back through and slightly tweak things that we changed before. It should be very minor things on the order of maybe a few percent. But it's never assumed that once you've set something that it doesn't change later on. So always go back through and re-optimize after you've gone through and done everything else. Hope this was helpful and good luck to you.